looks like a bunch of embargoes came down today, and IGN has their final preview for Star Wars Outlaws up on their YouTube channel. We're going to take a minute to dive in. This is one of my most anticipated upcoming games of 2024. I've been covering Star Wars Outlaws uh, since I first heard about it, and we will be playing the absolute hoo-ha out of this game once it goes live uh, at the end of August. So hopefully you're ready for that. Strap in, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let's check oh, out close. the final preview. Yeah, but... You don't have to pay me to hang out with you. <laughs> it seems impossible that Star Wars Outlaws is the first ever open world Star Wars game, but indeed it's true. With that first comes plenty of expectation, but also lots of excitement, particularly when the studio handling the effort is massive entertainment. The talented... By the way, this is uh, a distinction which I'm glad to see uh, in the coverage that I've seen over the last hour or so since all these articles started coming out. People are finally recognizing and commenting on the fact that this doesn't feel like a traditional Ubisoft experience. Like, this is massive. Massive is builds different games. They've built the Division Avatar there, and this is not the studio that has worked on the Assassin's Creed games. Um, those are other Ubisoft studios. And so a lot of the complaints and fears I've seen people having or stating over the past six, eight months has been around things they didn't like from the Assassin's Creed franchise. And every single time they make those statements, I always go, yeah, but Massive doesn't make those games. Right? Ubisoft makes those games. Massive makes the Division 1 and 2. Massive made the Avatar game. Like, you need to look at Massive's past work to understand what is going to be the Star Wars Outlaws experience. And that seems to finally be showing through uh, the five or so hours that people have played. PC Gamer has a great article out as well, which I'll be covering in a different piece that kind of talks about that and recognizes that this is a massive entertainment production, not an Ubisoft production. Ubisoft is just a publisher here, and that's a distinction to make. Developers of The Division. Speaking personally, I confess that I don't often get hyped up for too many open world games these days, outside of those made by Rockstar, as those can be counted on to raise the bar every single Red time, Dead but too, I baby. have been plenty hyped for Outlaws. After all, it's set after The Empire Strikes Back, you play as a Han Solo caliber scoundrel instead of Nyx. yet another Jedi, and you've got an awesome alien creature oh, that looks named amazing Nyx right there. by your side at all times, who promises to have an impact on gameplay and not just follow our hero K Vess around being adorable. In other words, it's got a lot going for it on paper. <sighs> Don't worry, Nix. The uh, next job will be better. And while it doesn't seem like Outlaws will do any Rockstar-like bar raising, after playing a near final build of it for four hours across two different sections of gameplay, I can say it's still one of my most anticipated games yet to come out in a busy second half of 2024, and it feels very Star Wars in all the right ways. That's, that's exactly what we want to hear right there, right? It feels... Star Wars in all the right ways. That's what makes me excited about what we're going to be seeing from KBS and Star Wars Outlaws uh, later this year. Uh, it's I, sh I quit, sh quit saying later this year. It's like later this month. Um, although technically it's not quite August because what is today? What is the date today? Today's the 30th. One month from now when we were playing this game. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Star Wars is my favorite franchise of all time and this game is shaping up to be something absolutely special in that universe i can't wait <sighs> we made it <laughs> Ubisoft has developed a reputation for making checklist open world games. Big spaces where you're given a to-do list of side quests and activities to complete outside of the golden path. Generally, this is not a compliment. But one of the things that impressed me about Star Wars Outlaws is that I didn't get the sense that I was just checking boxes to inch closer to 100% game completion. Don't get me wrong, there is plenty to do in Outlaws, but those side quests and activities feel a lot more organic than they do in the publisher's other games. 
For example, while wandering around the town of Miragana on the planet Toshara, I walked by an arcade minigame of sorts. I wandered up and played around and had a good time. I also stumbled upon a betting stand where I could wager on holographic horse races. I managed to bet on the right one by sheer good luck, which gave me a chuckle later when I discovered a data pad lying around elsewhere that gave me a strong hint on who to lay my money on. I also encountered a down-on-their-luck gambling addict who begged me for money. I obliged, enabling his vice and leaving with a promise that he'd share in his winnings should he find himself back on Lady Luck's good side. Naturally, there's also a cantina, and I even saw a sabak table, but I lacked sufficient funds at the time to buy in and play. By the way, I think it's cool that um, we've seen Sabak show up in multiple games now uh, over the years where you've been able to indulge your card playing fantasies in uh, the Star Wars world. I think it's really cool. We're going to see it again here, another iteration, be able to actually sit down at a table and risk it all if we want to. Um, it's a great it's great fun. I had a lot of fun in Red Dead Redemption 2 just playing poker. Uh, you know, it, we did this on the stream a couple of nights ago, even because I'm doing a different playthrough right now. And just sitting there on the stream for 30, 45 minutes, hanging out with people, just chatting while we were playing cards. It's, it's you know, it's a very relaxing pastime. And it's a lot of fun. So looking forward to seeing more of it here as well. Someone told me that the huts are scrambling to get back something of Jabba's. All of these optional activities feel very natural on the planets and towns of Outlaws, and that's true in God, that part looks good. because of the excellent art direction that makes every location ooze Star Wars authenticity. Yeah, that looks From the lighting, amazing. to the architecture, to the NPCs wow. milling about, Massive has, based on what I've seen so far, done an excellent job of setting an authentic Star Wars stage. <laughs> Juggle, juggle. And I'd be remiss if I didn't add how the story of Star Wars Outlaws only supports and reinforces nice. all of this. Kay is just out to make her way in an unforgiving galaxy, lying or double-crossing as she needs to in order to look out for number one. Let's get paid, this plays baby. out in occasional dialogue choices that pop up during cutscenes, adding a bit more player agency to what would otherwise be a mini Star Wars in-game movie. Will those choices affect how the plot ultimately plays plays out, I wouldn't bet on it, but there is a laudable faction reputation system that tracks how much, or little, each of the in-game syndicates likes you. Double cross the huts and you'll harm your reputation with them, but increase your standing with the Crimson Dawn. Piss off a faction enough and they won't let you into their territory, meaning you'll have to sneak in and stay undetected if you want access. What if I say no? Now that you know who I work for, I can't let you walk out of here. Uh, we've also heard that uh, you won't be able to use like fast travel waypoints and stuff in the territories where you have a poor reputation. So it's going to be important if you want to be able to get around the map as quickly as possible to keep your faction as high as possible with all of these various elements. But you're probably wondering, what of the moment to moment gameplay? In this, Star Wars Outlaws made me happy. This is a stealth game if you want it to be. And if you mess up in that attempt, I honestly like that you don't have a lightsaber to save you. You'll have to use Kay's blaster, which, yes, is upgradable, to get out of trouble, and that adds to the sense of danger because you're not a laser sword wielding demigod. As such, the blaster battles felt like they had meaningful stakes, and the stealth okay, gameplay had that was really to cool. it because let's, I knew let's, that I'd be up again. Let's go back and check that out again. Hang on. Stakes demigod as such so she stuns this guy and then moves forward into a crowd of other mobs the blaster battles felt like they had meaningful stakes and the stealth gameplay had a bit of weight that was to it cool because oh there's a lot of people I'd be Run. Up against it if i messed up calling for reinforcements roger that Oh, that blaster play Naturally, looks amazing. with stealth comes lockpicking, and it's here too in the form of data spikes. And I quite like how Outlaws handles it. Each lock has a particular audio signature, and it's up to you to match that. Oh, using the data spike. Listen to the rhythmic pattern and press in sync with every beat in a loop. You can peek left and right, adjusting difficulty if you want. You can enable an extra visual UI helper. You can also change the data spiking difficulty and the options. This is all really cool for the lock picking mechanic. Um, I like to see some sort of a mini game at play. Uh, so this 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 looks pretty cool here. I'm I'm a I'm a big fan 
pattern by pressing the right trigger in time with the beeps. The longer you take, the more likely you are to be spotted. Similarly, the hacking minigame is also really fun. Wow, so I didn't know either one of these existed in the game. So this, this pushes me more in the direction of, oh, Fallout. Because Fallout has a really cool lockpicking um, and hacking uh, mechanism. Not so much Starfield. Starfield had, you know, the, the digipics are okay and everything else. But Fallout has always been sort of like the standard with Bethesda games in any case for looking at how they've done the mini games over the years. Whether it's Skyrim or Fallout, I should say. Um, but I'm thinking more towards Fallout here because we had specifically the lockpicking and a mini game for the hacking. Which is slightly different than this mini game. But... This looks cool. Um, I'm a big fan. I mean, Cyberpunk 2077 had a good uh, hacking uh, minigame as well, so. Here, you'll need to line up the right symbols in the right order, which usually takes multiple attempts. Fail too often and you'll fail the hack entirely. It took me a few tries to wrap my head around, but once I did, I really enjoyed the opportunities I got to do some hacking. Nice. The core stealth gameplay is aided by the breakout star of Outlaws, Nyx. Yes, Nyx, Nyx is the buddy, BD1 of this game, but compared to Cal Kestis' droid companion, Kay's organic pal Nyx. can do a whole lot more for you. Nyx he can is distract awesome. an enemy by getting the bad guy's attention and adorably playing dead, or flat out attack them. He can hit buttons or switches too, or set off bombs, and retrieve items. This is useful when you're pinned down in a firefight and a more potent A300 blaster rifle is across the room. Nyx can go fetch it and bring it back and drop oh, it at your feet without that's cool. you leaving cover. I even like how Outlaws handles these larger weapons. They can't be reloaded, meaning that once you fire all the rounds, you just drop the empty gun and go back to your trusty blasters. This is likely a design decision to ensure that K never feels too overpowered, thus making sure the player is always on their toes in combat. Out here you live and die by your reputation. Finally, you can't have an open world Star Wars game without ways to get around that Mouse, expanse, baby. and in Outlaws, K has Nix. a speeder bike that, as you'd guess, can also be upgraded. <gasps> you can win yeah. credits doing I saw races, an appearance tab. or just stop off along the way to your destination at some interesting looking I saw stop. an appearance the tab. The bike controls well. It almost feels like driving a boat in Wave Race 64 in that it's pretty fast and arcadey and maneuverable, but hardly handles like it's on rails. That sounds great, too. Complementing this is Kay's ship, the Trailblazer, and yes, it's upgradable. I got to do a bit of outer space ship-to-ship -ship combat, and I had a good time. I'll need plenty more time in the pilot seat to really solidify my opinion here, but flying the Trailblazer made a good first impression. Oh, that's it. We've lost them. If there's one thing that concerned me a bit during my hands-on time, it's bugs. Outlaws went gold well before the preview event, meaning that if I wasn't playing the certification build, it was something mighty close. And while yes, there will inevitably be a day one patch, as most games have nowadays, it was still disappointing to see as many annoying little, admittedly mostly visual and harmless, glitches as I did. Eh, Hopefully that they don't day one me. update will knock out the bulk of them. You know the rules. No credits, no sabak. And you already owe the Pikes a fortune. Ultimately, though, I had a fantastic Look time with ship, Star baby. Wars Outlaws. Open world games tend to be jacks of all trades, masters of none. And while I'm not sure Outlaws will master any of its gameplay components, it nonetheless not only does them all very well, but it does so with a convincing Star Wars sheen. And since there's somehow never been an open world Star Wars game before, it feels new, oh, that looks fresh, amazing. and most welcome. I'm glad this is arguably the first big name game out this fall on August 30th because I can't wait to play more of it. How do you know my name? I keep an eye out for new talent. For more on Star Wars Outlaws, don't miss our exclusive 10 minutes of gameplay as well as our behind the scenes look at how Nyx was created. And for the 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 overall coverage that IGN has had has been pretty spectacular. Obviously lots of different places do different things. Um, we're going to be looking at the uh, PC Gamer article here in a bit, probably tomorrow or the next day. But in the meantime, um, I am absolutely 100% on board for Star Wars Outlaws and we're going to be playing a ton of this. I still have yet to make a decision on whether or not I'm going to pre-order the Ultimate Edition to get a head start or not but 
Either way, we're going to be playing lots of Star Wars Outlaws at the end of the month. Hopefully you're along for that ride. If you are, check out the playlist below to find out all of my Star Wars Outlaws coverage. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams here and on Twitch. Check out all the socials, Discord, Patreon. May the Force be with you, everyone. See you next time.